All right, so this is the line current. Um, I drew it vertically this time because that's easier. Um, all right, so let's say we have a line current and we want to find the magnetic field due to this line current. We have done this using Bill Savart's law before, so we at least know the result. The result that we get, if we do it correctly, it should be, um, let's see, mu naught i over 2 pi r. That's the result we had from before, right? So we are hoping that we'll get the same result using um, Ampere's law. Um, but this will be a good setup to demonstrate how you apply Ampere's law. And I hope that this will look um, similar to with Gauss's law because we have done the first step already similar to Gauss's law. We figured out the direction of the magnetic field. So when we have this line current, I know that my magnetic field lines in a perspective view looks kind of like this. Um, so it will be coming out of the board here into the board here. I know this is how my magnetic field lines look like. Good? Oops. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. So what do we do in applying Gauss's law to find the electric field after we draw the electric field lines? What do we do after having drawn the electric field lines? So, you know, as a reminder, this was Gauss's law, right? The Gauss's law said the surface integral or the electric flux was equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So even though we are not actually ever going to do an integral, we have to pretend that we are going to do an integral. So uh, what did you have to do to set up that integral in applying Gauss's law to find the electric field? Choose a surface. Essentially, we have to define what we are integrating over here. So we have to choose what we called then Gaussian surface. So uh, what we are going to have to do now is we are going to have to pick an Amperian loop. Amperian. By the way, I have seen Amperian spelled with an I here. That never felt right to me, so I'm just going to spell it with an E. Um, so we have to pick an Amperian loop. It's a loop because we are doing the line integral, not surface integral. So remember how you picked the Gaussian surface. The goal in picking the Gaussian surface was that you wanted uh, one or the other thing to be true for this E dot dA. You wanted either to be able to say that your electric field has the same magnitude over the surface due to symmetry. Or you want it to be able to say that E dot dA is zero for that particular surface. So that you could focus on the parts where it wasn't zero. Right? That, all of that sounds familiar? So that's going to be our same criteria for choosing the loop here. So when we choose the loop for the B dot dL, we want to be able to say um, magnetic field magnitude is same over the entire loop. Or we want to be able to say for particular line segments that B dot dL is going to be zero. So here, you know, this is a simple setup. So I think I can actually pick a loop, uh, pick a path where the magnetic B dot DL will be uh, uniform. It will be the same value of B over the entire loop. What shape would that loop be? It will conform to cylindrical symmetry, but cylinder is a three-dimensional object. I'm looking for a one-dimensional object, a loop. Huh? Square. Square, square is still a two-dimensional object. So circle, but not the circle, but boundary of a circle, right? <laughs> yeah, line is a one-dimensional object. So okay, okay. So let me um, refine my question first. So the question would have been all right. Um, pick a point here, P, and um, or pick a point which is at a distance r from the line. And the question would have been, what is the strength of magnetic field at this distance r? Right? So to answer this question, we pick an Amperian loop for which we can say that this B dot dL will be constant 
over the around the loop. So the loop that I the path I'm going to pick is the circular path that goes through that uh, point. So that the value of b I figure out has something to do with this point. Yeah. Any questions? So so this is my Ampirian loop. So like with application of Gauss's law, I would, would start by stating Ampere's law. So Ampere's law says that this line integral b dot dl around this, uh, let me do this with red, around this loop that I defined in a way that it conforms to the symmetry is equal to current, oops, uh, mu naught times current enclosed. All right. Let me handle the left hand side first. So what I want to be able to do is um, I want to be able to pull out um, um, two things. I want to be able to handle this dot product here. And after handling the dot product, I want to be, be able to pull out the magnitude of B. So um, what does this dot product look like for this path? So, the, so this is the question. The direction of magnetic field. Let's say pick a point here. Direction of magnetic field at this point and compare that with the direction of DL. The direction of DL is the direction along the loop, right? How, how do they compare? How do those two directions compare? They're parallel, right? Which means I can simplify this dot product for it to be simply, well, um, just uh, the line integral of B DL. Doesn't seem like I did much, but this is actually important. Uh, going through this argument is important. Um, all right, and now what I want to do is I want to be able to argue that the magnitude of magnetic field is uh, constant over this loop. Uh, how can I, uh, what do I use to make that argument? So how do I know that magnetic field at this point and magnetic field at this point have the same magnitude? Symmetry, what kind of symmetry? Oh, well you said the rotational, yeah. Rotational symmetry, you can imagine applying the rotation operation that will take this point to here, but you don't change anything physically, so they must have the same magnitude. So you know, make that argument. Once you have done that, once again, what you write down is really simple but the actual mathematical argument you have to make are abstract, um, sophisticated. So you can pull out B, so you have B times the integral DL. Well, what is this integral of DL? Just the circumference of the circle, right? So just like with Gauss's law, we start by pretending that we are going to do some integral and we are going to find some way not to do it because it's just gonna be the, I don't actually have to do the integral. I know this is circumference 2 pi r. Yeah. Okay, so all of this is equal to the right hand side. I guess i n close is just the current i. That's what's going through the loop. So this will be mu naught i. So they are equal to each other. And now I can solve this for b. So when I do that, I get magnetic field B is equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R. This is the exact same result we had using Bio Savart's law. And you know, just like with Gauss's law, the only difference was that this calculation was much easier. I mean, you do have to make a more sophisticated abstract argument. But once you are able to do that, then the rest of the calculation is much easier.